Hey, this is Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com, and I'm going to do a tutorial on animating rain. Now, I did a tutorial on this uh, probably several years ago, but there are a lot of different tricks uh, that I've learned since then, as well as I've learned how to teach it a little bit better. And I think with this particular tutorial, I'm going to show you something that is pretty easy, but in my opinion, I know at least for me, uh, this is probably the best animated rain I've come up with. So I want to share that with you. Uh, before I get started, I do want to give some props where props are due. Uh, there are a couple of things that I learned um, from watching different people do different things. One of them being Adam Phillips, another person being Bert Monroy. Um, and taking some of the things that they did, mixing them with some of the things that I did and putting them together in this one little technique. So I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what we're going to do. And, uh, let's go ahead and open up our starting document here. All right. So in... Toon Boom Animate, we have just this little city here, nothing spectacular, just a layer for the sky, layer for the city. Now, the actual rain is not going to be built in Toon Boom. It's actually going to be built over in Photoshop. So I'm going to jump over to Photoshop. And because I know I'm working at 720p, that's 1280 by 720, I'm going to create uh, my documents at that size. So I'll just do a new document, Command N, Control N on PC, and we'll do 1280 by 720. And a transparent background. Okay, now what I want to do is going to get my default colors by simply pressing the letter D, and that will give me a black foreground color, white background color. And I'm going to fill my canvas with that. So I'll do simply option delete. It's alt backspace on PC. Let's go under filters. I'm going to go to noise, add noise. And I'm going to use about 29% Gaussian and monochromatic. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is go to image adjustments. I'm going to come down to Threshold, and I'm going to move this about until, it's almost like a little star field here. Um, I think that's about good. Because uh, what I'm working on right now, there's actually going to be two different layers of rain. There's going to be the foreground layer, um, what's in front, and that's going to be a little bit larger raindrops, and what's going to be in the back. So. These are going to be the drops in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And so we have all of these dots, but I don't want the background. I just want the little white dots. So I'm going to click over to Channels for a moment. Hold down my Command key, Control on PC, and just click one of the channels. And what that's going to do is it's going to select everything that's not black. Okay, so we've got these like little twinkling stars happening here right now. So we'll go back to our layers. And because our little dots are selected, I'm going to copy these to a new layer. So I'm going to simply do Command J, Control J on PC. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is select our bottom layer here. I just want to give it a crazy color. So I can see what's going on. I'm going to just grab a nice little blue here. And I'm going to fill my bottom layer with blue instead of it being filled with the uh, black little star field. So let's do Option, Delete, Alt Backspace on PC. Now you can kind of see some of the specs here. I'm going to zoom in. So on layer two, we have the dots there by themselves, and we and I kind of wanted to make sure there's no extra little black fragments around it. Okay, so 
layer two, we're just gonna call this rain for right now so we know what it is. And what I wanna do on layer two, let's go to filter, let's go to blur, and I wanna to go to motion blur. And I have the angle set at 90, and the distance, I have it set at about 10 pixels. So you can see these nice little strips here. So I'll click on OK. Now, what I want to do is, because this looks a little bit faint, I'm going to duplicate the rain layer simply by doing Command-J, Control-J on PC. And if you notice, these got a little bit darker. I can do it one more time. Okay, so it's not exactly white. It's like this off kind of translucent color. So we've got several layers here, and I'm going to do Command-E, Control-E on PC, to merge those layers down so we just have that solid look again. All right, so again, I can turn my rain on and off. I'm going to zoom out here for a moment. Okay, so there are our rain droplets, and I'm going to turn off our bottom layer, and you really can't see anything right now. The reason I have that blue layer there is just so I can see what's going on. So I'm going to save this for web. I'm going to make sure it's set to ping and make sure it's set at transparency. It's 1280 by 720. And I'll click on save and make a new folder. Call it rain images. And this is going to be our back rain. Doki. I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to turn on our bottom layer again so we can see what's going on. I'm going to zoom out. Let's do command minus. All right. Now, make sure I'm selecting the rain layer and I'm going to scale this. So I'm going to do command T, control T on PC. I'm going to hold down my option key and shift, it's alt and shift on PC, and drag this up a bit and go ahead and hit return. And now I'm going to save this out and this is going to be saved again as a ping, but this is going to be the front rain. Okay. Now that we have those saved out, we're gonna jump back over to animate. And I wanna make a new drawing layer and we're going to import a drawing here. So let's browse and go to our rain images folder. And the first thing I want to import is going to be our back rain. Okay. Add to the existing layer. Yes. Do we want to vectorize this? No. Uh, Pre-multiplied with white. I'm just going to set this to straight for right now. And we'll click OK. All right, so we have that there. And I'm going to go ahead and call this layer back rain. All righty. All right, so it's not a lot going on right now. But what I want to do is I'm going to set about four frames here. So I'll select frame four and I'm going to press F5 to extend our frames. I'm going to turn on my animate button and go to my transform tool. Now this next part can be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to uh, pretty much add in a little kind of a training wheel here. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into my symbol of the back rain for a minute. So I'm simply double click. And so I can barely see anything here. I'm just going to add another drawing layer 
take my brush tool and what I want to do is make a ridiculously large little circle going to make this right up in the corner here. This is a little mark. And let's go back to the top. Okay. And so we'll select this frame here. So now I can see that little mark there. Let's make sure my transform tool is on. So animate and transform are on. Let's grab this first frame. And we're going to insert a keyframe. Let's do F6. And now select the next frame. Drop in another keyframe, F6. Now this is where this little mark is going to come in handy. Uh, the first thing I want to do is click this side and I'm just going to drag this over. So I'm pretty much flipping this for this next frame here. So the first frame are circles on our left. Second frame is on the right. So we'll go to the third frame. Now the other thing I want to show you is you don't have to necessarily press F6 each time, um, especially with the animate button press. I can just go ahead and change what I'm doing here and it'll automatically insert the keyframe for me. So now I'm going to click the top here and drag this down. So I'm flipping it upside down. Okay. So again, this little training marker here, it's got the circles on the left, then it's on the right. It's on the right bottom. And then the last part, we'll flip this again. And so it's on the left bottom. Now, what I was pretty much doing is making sure that each frame, these lines are in a different place. And it can get a little bit confusing, and I've messed up on this sometimes. So I thought, you know what, let's give ourselves a little little training wheel here. Make sure all the stuff is still lining up. All right, so now I'll double click, go back in to our background layer and get rid of that little training wheel there. Go back to the top. All right, so now we have those four frames and now we're ready to make a cycle. And what I want to do is hold on my shift key, select all four of these frames, and I'm going to click and drag this straight to the library. Now this says back rain two, because we already had our image imported and it's called back rain. I'm going to change the name of this. Okay. This is going to be, cycle. Okay. All right. So on the main timeline, I'll select all four of these frames, delete them. Simply press delete or backspace on PC. And for to pull in this cycle, what I want to do, I'm just using the little 60 frames here. So I know it's uh, four frames. So we're going to do a cycle of about 15. So four times 15 is 60. So I'm gonna click and drag this. I'm gonna hold down my control key. And going to let go of the mouse. And so I'm getting the paste special option. Extend the exposure. Yes, we wanna do that. Paste all the frames of the symbol. We want to do that. And the number of cycles. We want this to be 15. And we want it to be normal. So I'll just go ahead and hit turn let's enter on PC so now that's playing so I'm going to deselect that for a moment I want to turn on my camera mask just to take a look at this for a minute and turn off our animate button I'm going to click on play I've got my loop turned on So that's the, the layer of rain we have. That's the back rain. So what I'm going to do next 
this is where it gets interesting. Now, this is where um, I used to just make my rain just with this one layer and just do that little random flipping thing. Now, I'm going to add another. So we have a new layer. And so let's go ahead and import our image. And we'll browse and grab our front rain. And bringing that in and I'm going to add it to the existing layer. Again, I'm going to make this straight and I'll click OK. All right, so I'm going to just click off of this for a moment. So we can see if we zoom in here, let's go up to about 100. Um, we have some larger streaks here and we also have the smaller ones that are in the background. So let's set this back to fit to view. And what I'm going to do is call this layer just front, like FRT, rain. Okay, and we'll extend this all the way out to 60 frames. Let's do F5. And what I'm going to do now is right click on this and we're going to duplicate that selected layer. All right, let's zoom out. I'm going to turn off my camera mask so I can see what's going on. Now, I have my transform tool selected and on this top, with this top rain selected, we've duplicated this, but I want to hold down my shift key and use my arrow keys. And I'm going to move this directly above. So it's pretty much the exact same thing, but we're moving it. Uh, so it's like sitting right on top of this. Okay. Now for the front rain cycle, what we're going to do is make sure our animate button is turned on. Select frame one on both of these layers. So I'm going to pull this down so you can see we have this entire thing selected. I'm going to insert a keyframe, F6. And what I want to do right now is I want this to be about 10 frames long. I want the um, cycle to be about 10 frames long. So what I want to do to make sure it's a seamless loop, is I'm going to actually go to frame 11. Hold on my shift key. And I want to insert a keyframe, F6. Okay. And I'm going to hold on my space bar so I can use the move tool here. And now I'm going to hold down my shift key and use my arrow keys. And I'm going to move this down. Let's see, let's zoom in here. Okay, it looks like it's about at the right spot. So I'm looking for exactly where the line, the top of my screen is right here. So that looks pretty good. So scrubbing this back and forth, that's looking right. All right, so we did frame 11, now this is why. I'm now gonna select frame 10 on both of my layers. Insert a keyframe, F6, okay? Now I'm doing this mainly because it'll make it a lot easier for me if I say I want this to loop six times, I know that that's going to be 60 frames. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is select the rest of these frames. I didn't actually need all of these, just like to have them to be safe. Select all these extra frames, frames 11 through 60 on both layers and simply press delete or backspace. Okay. Now I'm going to turn off my animate button and I'm going to select all 10 frames of both layers, my front rain, and I'm going to click and drag this to my library. And it's FRT rain. Again, just to make sure we don't get crazy with our naming here, let's rename this. This is going to be our front rain cycle. All 
All right, so that's done. And what I want to do now, so in my timeline, I'm going to get rid of one of these layers. And the front rain sitting here, let's get rid of all these frames. I'll select all the frames and simply press delete backspace on PC. And what I want to do next, we have our front rain cycle. I'm going to click and drag this over to the timeline. Hold on my command key. Actually, hold on my control key, excuse me. And so we're going to get paste special. And we want to extend the exposure and paste all the frames. We don't want 15 cycles because this is actually a cycle of uh, 10 frames. So we just want this to go six times. And we'll go ahead and press enter. All right, so let's go ahead and double check something right here. That looks good. We're double checking just exactly what happened with our front cycle here and make sure everything looks decent. Let's zoom out. Ah, that's what our problem is. Okay. So it looks like it's uh, it's working right. It's just in the wrong spot. So what we're going to do is make sure we bring down our rain cycle so it's laying in the right spot at the very beginning. And so that's what should be happening. Okay. So let's zoom back in. Command plus. Let's actually turn this on fit to view. I'm going to turn on my camera mask here. Now, of course, the camera mask is set up so we can see what the final animation would look like once it's exported. So we're not seeing anything uh, peeking around the corners. So if I click play, we now have our rain set up. So this is a combination of a cycle of four, and that's kind of flipping around the PNG, and then we actually have the scaled up PNG that's scrolling. And by mixing those together, we end up with a pretty decent looking rain that uh, picking out a cycles um, inside of it is a little more difficult. So the only thing missing pretty much is to add in um, our sound effects. And we'll probably do another tutorial uh, later on on adding in some raindrops if there's an object in the foreground or if a person's in the foreground and just getting some raindrops off of that. But I wanted to share this with you because I think it's a pretty cool little trick to do. Uh, you can get a little more crazy with it and make your raindrops a little larger or maybe bring this in and rotate the rain. And once we start doing crazy stuff like that, hey, the sky's the limit. Sorry, the pun about rain, sky. Anyway, this has been Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com. Keep it simple. Make it perfect. If you don't have time to make it perfect, rethink the idea. Oh, and by the way, if you do anything with this tutorial, please shoot me a link. I'd love to see what you come up with.